Hi guys, we are today at the train station because we are hitting Quinta do Valmiao. Yes, but we're not going alone. We have Alves de Souza, who is one of the best producers in the region, and Isa is actually one of the favorites, top three. So, Hello guys, welcome to the Douro Valley. So let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Está feito, o negócio é feito. Está feito, muito obrigado. E dessa forma você já pode também pegar algo para a família para casa. E eu vou abrir uma nova uma. Então, isso é, bem, é um caramelo, basicamente. Mas é bom com uma cidade de Tawny. Para você. Obrigado. Para você. 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 Okay, so we are in the train and uh, like this we can see the whole Douro River. That was always my dream to come here and take this train. But we wanted to ask you, Tiago, to tell us more about the region. And the first question we have is obviously, what are the most popular grapes? Mm -hmm. So, well, Douro has a fantastic heritage of almost 100 indigenous, 120 indigenous grapes. And uh, it's fantastic to, to, to play with them and to try to make different wines. But of course, that over these last few years, we've been specializing on a few of those. Mm -hmm. So Toriga Franca is the most planted grape in mm -hmm. the valley. And it's one grape that allows you to make uh, many different kinds of ports and many different kinds of dry wines. It's really the backbone of the region. Then you have a Toriga Nacional that is probably today's Portugal's flagship grape. It has a lot of character. And then you have Tinto Cão, Tinto Roriz, uh, and many others. So those are the most popular. What is it about the valley, about the whole Douro Valley, that makes it so unique, that makes it so special, and such a great place to grow wine? Well, you just have to, to look outside and you'll uh, understand how special this is. We have such a unique landscape and, uh, and so complex and challenging at the same time. So you have the river crossing, dividing the slopes, and so it creates so many different uh, Conditions, so many different uh, sites for growing uh, grapes and uh, making wines that it's it's really fantastic. So, but it must be extremely difficult to grow grapes and to harvest. And this is really expensive to It is. To it is, it is. It's, it's a it's a great challenge. That's that's a reality. Uh, so so labor is hard. It, it, it's not easy to find enough crazy people to, to to go out and to work in such conditions. But I think that when we all see what can come out of these vineyards, well, I think it totally compensates. So, the what are the soils? The soil, for example, we don't have a real soil. We have what we can call an anthropic soil. For example, when you look around and you see how the soil is, you basically have the rock. And so even to be able to plant um, vineyards, you have to create a little bit of soil. So with the bulldozers, hard machinery, sometimes dynamite, we have really to dynamite the, the, the soil to, to create some soil. But the, the, the main rock here is schist or slate. Okay. So, um, so it's very, very difficult conditions because there's no organic material. Everything, the soils are very poor. But of course, that leads to great, great concentration on the, on the, on the berries and a fantastic yeah. character. You know that the best berries come from the toughest soils, right? Yeah. Toughest soils, so. many times, many times. So what do we have here? So now we have here a very, very special wine for our family. It's called Abandonado, which means abandoned in Portuguese. Abandoned. Abandoned. And uh, this is a very old vineyard that was planted 85 years ago at the top of, uh, of, uh, of the mountain over there, at Caivosa. And so <laughs> if now it's difficult to plant a vineyard, imagine how it was 85 years ago. So they weren't able to go deep enough. Mm -hmm. So they planted, the rock stayed too close to the surface, so after some time many plants started to die. Mm -hmm. And after a few more years almost half of the vineyard was gone, so they thought it's too difficult to work here, let's just forget it. So, uh, so they abandoned the place and all the local people started to know it as o abandonado, mm -hmm. the abandoned in Portuguese. So, uh, Many years after, already with my father and then me helping, well, we were always passing by and thinking, we have to do something about this. It has more, more rocks than vines. So uh, <laughs> we've tried to replant, 
everything dies again because we were literally planting over rocks so we thought we have to be more drastic we'll have to dynamite the whole thing so as did? we usually do this close to do it when the, but we were already getting close to the harvest this was back in 2004 so i asked my father so let me just give it a try uh -huh. one last time just to give us a few ideas of what should we plant here next so so I, I have to admit that I wasn't thinking about the new wine, but just to give us a few ideas. And uh, we did that, and right away we, we totally fell in love with this vineyard because it showed so much character, so much personality that we just... So you, you used the old vines, no changes, just no anything? No changes, we just left it Field as blend. it was. Yeah. Field plants with, again, still more rocks than vines there, so it's not even a continuous vineyard. So everything that I learned at school, it's actually almost the opposite, mm -hmm. but I think that it's one of those vineyards that I love to show to my viticulture professors to show you that it's true that we have to it's do the possible. best possible, but uh -huh. a great wine, it's, it's, it's the expression of the vineyard always. This is the wine made by nature. It's a wine made by nature, definitely. So it's not a natural wine, but it's, it's not, actually exactly, made by nature. Exactly. Yeah, That's great. the thing. <laughs> I love the color again. Yeah. It's so brilliant. It's already, it's, it's kind of a light in the nose, you know, you don't, you know. And what I love the most about it is that, for example, the things that you find in the wine, it's, it's such a pure expression of what you find out in the vineyard, because you get, for example, you get the, the, the freshness from the altitude, so that vineyard mm -hmm. is around 500 meters, so it has these fresher aromatics, which is actually gains also a little bit with the, we have a lot of forest around the vineyard, so you get this kind of like minty, balsamic yep, yep. flavor that comes a lot from the eucalyptus and pine trees that are around the vineyard. Then you taste the slate, you taste the yep. cheese, you have this minerality that even yep. if we don't know how to explain it, you feel it also in no. the wine as well. And then you have the concentration from the old vines, but still with the balance of all those things playing together. So it's uh, it's it's the, really the vineyard and the nature express. Tiago, the wines are absolutely amazing. So thank you very much for letting us try them here in this uh, unique setting as well, <laughs> but with a beautiful backdrop. Uh, if you haven't had Tiago's wines, shame on you, you definitely need to try them. Definitely need to drink more Doro, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we asked some importer in Poland to bring Tiago's wine to Poland. He's like, yeah, somebody please, please, please bring <laughs> these wines to Poland. Thanks again, Tiago. Oh, thank you. And now that drink you know, Doro. Drink Doro, and now that you know the way here, you're always welcome to come back anytime. So. Yes, and we both love the Doro, yeah, I have to say. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Vito. Yeah. So Good. this is Vito Olazabal from? From Quinta of Okay. Where we are now. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we could start by showing you the winery. So Vito, or as some people call you Don Vito. <laughs> no, where are we? Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> Just Vito. Vito is a nickname. Okay. My real name is Francisco. Francisco. Okay. But uh, Vito, I don't know why. <laughs> I think was my sister called me Vito when I was a kid. That's well, cool. we, we are here at the Kinderwalmion Winery. And this is a combination of old things and new things. Basically, we have readapted to the lagars. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is this, right here? Well, the lagars uh, are, of course, these tanks made of granite. Mm -hmm. We think that uh, it's important to use them uh, both for dry wines and for port wine. How, how much time does this take? How long does it take? The whole vintage. The process. No, the, 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 process, the process of process crushing. Here, with of the crushing. Uh, and, uh, for port wine, it takes uh, three, four days. Mm -hmm. Not more than that. Okay. Uh, and how many stuff? people do you need to do it in such a big lagarage? Uh, no, they're not very big. The lagarage in the past <laughs> used, to, used to go to the wall. You oh, know? Really? Oh, okay. We have reduced the size. Uh, no, we have normally we, we use about six, seven people uh -huh. in, the, in the smaller ones because we have some other people. But in this one, we use six, seven people okay. to, to go back and forth, okay. you know, like the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's funny because uh, it's difficult to find uh, work working force in the winter's mm -hmm. time. 
But uh, uh, in spite of that, people, I think people enjoy doing that. They want to take part. It's a, it's a good experience, mm -hmm. especially when the fermentation has already started, because it's <laughs> yeah, warmer it's and softer. Yeah. <laughs> the Can beginning is a bit... What? Can we come maybe? Yes, can we come maybe for the for of the Of course, yes. <laughs> have some fun. We need, we need, <laughs> we need, we people. need your contribution. <laughs> that would be wonderful to actually make a video and show this. Exactly. Yeah. Shall we go out into the field, into the yes. vineyard? Yes, yes. Let's okay. go. Very pleased. Mm -hmm. Okay. After you, okay. show us where to go. So Vito, uh, we just came with you by car to the mountain, very, very high. It's blowing, the wind is blowing yes. really hard, so we can't stay outside. It's not normal. So we hid in here, what is this? Where are we? It represents the achievement, the last great achievement of Antonia Arlaide Ferreira. Don Antonia, uh, in the, after the, the 1860, mm -hmm. uh, start to invest in do, the Doro Superior, what we call now the Doro Superior. Yeah, Doña Antonia, who was your grand grand My great great grandmother. Exactly. She was already a very wealthy and very prosperous uh, personality, very well known, very popular, I would say, in her way. Uh, she, she was a, a, a woman with great vision and courage. And she was attracted by the Doro Superior, which was in those times a very wild and inhospitable region. But she, she saw something that now is being completely confirmed, and this is, this is perhaps the future of the mm -hmm. Doro region. She bought several different quintas, but then she, she, she discovered that there was a piece of land that was put in auction by the local authorities. This was owned by the local municipality. And she was interested by that. And she bought 300 hectares mm -hmm. of bush. There was nothing, not a single building. Uh, some of her collaborators thought that she, the, the, that she was becoming a bit, a bit nuts because <laughs> it's such, such, such a long way out. It took about 10 days to come over here by boat. And the, oh. by, the boat was the only safe way of traveling because by From the mountains, port. lots of bandits. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then she, she, she made a bet because the train was being built from Oporto and supposedly one day, one day would arrive to the Spanish border, which is 20 kilometers away. It took 10 years. Mm -hmm. So she waited for 10 years for the train to arrive. <laughs> and when the train arrived, well, she imported lots of Galician people because there was not, was not sufficient manpower. And she built everything. She built, she, she, she planted the vineyards, the olive groves, and many buildings, the house, two wineries. And then in 1895, uh, end of 94, 95, the whole thing was ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, the man who directed the project was Antonio Claro da Fonseca, decided to build the chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, she was not very happy about that, it is told because she was already at a chapel much bigger than, well, oh, okay. than this one near the heart. And she was, uh, uh, she was a good Catholic, but she was also very close to her money. She didn't like to spend money mm -hmm. in the most desperate way. So it is said in the family that she, she was a bit cross with him. That's why they put a plate over there saying that the building, this chapel was built by Antonio Light Ferreira on demand of Mr. Claro da Fonseca. <laughs> she didn't want, she wanted to, the, the, the next generation to know that was not her initiative. <laughs> I only imagine that uh, also the reason of the chapel being here is, is because it has the, the better view of the Quinta. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that one day she came here when she decided to, to, to consider the, the buying of this property and she was attracted by something that's not, not very frequent in the, in the door is that she saw this, this Gently slopes yeah. of uh, all the land across uh, alongside the river, which is much less steep and yeah. uh, harsh and difficult to cultivate than the central area of the door. Mm -hmm. And she was, I think, this was one of the things that persuaded her to make this big investment. Mm -hmm. We must move to a more practical yes, exercise <laughs> and go down to the house okay. and taste our wines. Okay? Yes, so let's taste some. Thank That's you. wonderful. <laughs> let's go. So what is about this wine? Well, I think that uh, what 
Well, the, the character of the uh, Valmier wines is basically a certain intensity, deepness, uh, combined with certain freshness, which perhaps from a hot region, from my, like, like uh, the Doro Superior, it's not easy to obtain. And uh, 2011 when, was certainly one of our most successful wines because, of course, we got the fourth place in my spectator uh, top 100, which was very good for us. Mm -hmm. It was very good for the Doro because yeah, exactly. that year there were three wines on the, the top four. Exactly. It was Daos Vintage, Creuseia and Valmiel. It was fantastically good for us. It was the victory of the Doro. And, but then, speaking about the wine, I think that uh, it's basically a combination of Toriga Nacional, uh, about 55% of Toriga Nacional, which gives the, the, this, uh, this violet tinge uh, mm -hmm. of the bouquet. Mm -hmm. uh, it has mouth-feeling mouth -feeling, uh, flavor. Um, and the fresh nut comes a little bit from, from Toriga Franca. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very classical year, 2011, here in the, in the Doro Superior. So, Vito, thank you very much for inviting so, us. It's such a great pleasure to, to welcome, uh, no, to, uh, to welcome uh, people from Europe like you, people that share, that share with us the idea that uh, well, in spite of everything, Europe is still a solution. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, People had also, like Portugal, like Poland has fought with, bravely for independence for many, for many, many years, uh, having difficult uh, yes, neighbors, difficult you know. Class, yeah. uh, I hope that one day you will, will develop very good relations that the same that exist nowadays between Portugal and Spain. Mm. So we only have one neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for The other uh, neighbor is Atlantic. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much Cheers. for inviting Cheers. us uh, to your house to you. uh, and uh, to the vineyard. Yeah. And, uh, I think yeah, we but... should drink less but better. This yes, is a good exactly. Song. Less is more, as we say, yeah. right? Uh... Okay, bye, Vito. Thank you. Bye. I hope to Have see you nice next time. time. Yeah, bye. 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 Thank you very much, Vito. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, very much. <laughs> to you Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Take care. So, unfortunately, this is actually the end of our trip to the Dora Valley. It's been an incredible couple of days. We met some amazing people, amazing winemakers, and drank some great, great, great wine. The only thing I can say to end this off is. If you ever have a chance, please come to the Doro Valley and drink more Doro wines. Yeah, we love Doro Valley. We can say that you, you need to drink less but better. And please subscribe, give us your likes, give us your comments, and come to Doro. And tell us where you want us to go next. Yeah. Thanks a lot, and see you next time. Bye. Bye.